What's going on guys, it's Frog Gunnaman here, and welcome to an Overwatch League tier list video. So I just wanted to go through, give my opinions on all of the teams, and because we're at the halfway point of the season now, I just wanted to say how, like, on a scale of 1 to 10, how fun is the, are these teams to watch when they're playing? Um, obviously there's going to be some bias in this, as my tier list, if you want to leave your own tier list, your own rankings in the description or the comments below, then feel free to, but this is just my personal opinion on the players and how fun this team is to watch so we're going to be going from left to right as this presents it so starting off with the dallas fuel oh my god and if where to start this team you did nobody expected this team to do as well as they have and i think it's all down to that dps duo sparkle and doha sparkle and doha have been doing so well but even then it's not just sparkle and doha that all of their team pops off it's jexa hanbin um, all of them just go hard and they are unstoppable at the moment. Like, it is insane how far ahead the Dallas Fuel are ahead of everybody. And it's going to be hard to catch them. I think the Shark have the best, most reasonable chance of catching them and maybe the Outlaws. But at the moment, just nobody is stopping them. And when they get to play, when they get to be able to play, get teams to play them the way they want to play, there's just no stopping them. The only way. But the Shanghai Dragons managed to do this was by getting them to play on the Wrecking Ball and Fate just dominated on the Wrecking Ball which then allowed them to get in and win the game because Fate was just better than Dallas' main tank on the Wrecking Ball. Anyway, Fearless on his own is still fantastic. Don't get, it, don't get me wrong, Fearless is amazing. He just got called out on um, out for it on a Wrecking Ball comp that the Shanghai Dragons team seems to have perfected. So yeah, Dallas still Easily S tier at the moment, they are on fire, maybe pun intended. Moving on to the New York Excelsior. The New York Excelsior is a team I want to root for. Obviously, they're held up by their, their veteran player, Jonak, who has stayed loyal to this team since the very beginning, since he joined the New York Excelsior, which I believe was in the inaugural season. But they have some good players. They have that pair of like Bianca, um, they have Feather and all the DPS. They're, they have two separate DPS doers who they can switch out interchangeably if it's not working out for them, which is great for them. But I think this team just doesn't have it together completely yet. Um, they're four and six in the standings, and I feel like they could be doing a lot better. Just the loss to their charge was rough on them, and they need to pick themselves back up because they got a big win over the Philadelphia Fusion in the June Joust. And if they want to be, they need to be posting up results like that consistently if they want to be making an honest push for the playoffs. But at the moment, I think the New York Excelsior are easily a B tier team who could go into A tier if they find it their rhythm. The Guanju Charge. The Guanju Charge are easily a team, but it's basically just saying, okay, we're going to set up Eileen or Choice A1, and we're going to hope that our DPS duo can carry us to a win. Because basically it's Nanoblade or whatever they're doing, whatever their hit their hit scan or whatever their their team is playing, if they can get that together, they win. But they're three and six, I believe, at the moment, and it's um it's not working out as much as it could be. And obviously they did get the win over the New York Excelsior, so this ranking is going to look a little bit weird. But I think the New York Excelsior, especially getting that June Just appearance, even though they finished last. It's still impressive. Step 3 went over the spark, and even though it could have been a fluke, was impressive. So, I think the Guanju Charge just easily sit in C tier for me at the moment. They could move up, they just need to get it together. And I truly believe that the loss of Nero has impacted the team just significantly. Obviously, losing Nero to the San Francisco Shock was rough, but that's just what the San Francisco Shock do. They hoover up all of the talent in the league. So, moving over, we have the Shanghai Dragons. Now, the Shanghai Dragons, there's this, the story of Fate winning his first um, tournament after coming so close on the floor of the Mayhem last year. is a story that we all love, obviously. Um, but just Lip and Flatter, specifically, Izayaki, uh, that, that team just, just gets it together. Fate and Void on their tank, so this is just... The Shanghai Dragons are dominant in APAC at the moment, and the only team that realistically I can think can stop them 
is the Dallas Fuel, and that's only if the Dallas Fuel can get for Shanghai into playing how they want to play. Obviously, if it goes the other way around, we've already seen how that happens with Shanghai essentially reverse sweeping Dallas in the finals of the June Joust. But obviously, it goes without saying, I think, honestly, I think that, that in this order, um, Shanghai Dragons and the Dallas Fuel. Um, but yeah, Shanghai Dragon is amazing. Moving over, Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Fusion. Now, the Philadelphia Fusion are very much a hot and cold street team. Um, which me and my me and my co-host have spoken about this so many times. Um, in our predictions videos and our results videos. Um, if they can get it together, they have some amazing players at EQO. They've got Carpe, Mano, Hopper, Alarm. If this team can get it together, and if this team really comes out fighting, they will win. And you'll see in my predictions video, I have a bit of a spicy pick around this team, so stay tuned for that later on in the week. But yeah, I think I think the Philadelphia Fusion are, are a pretty A tier team. They're not S tier, but not by a long way. But they comfortably fit into the A tier team. I generally enjoy watching them, and I think that they have the power on their team to be an A tier team. They just had a rough, rough go of it in June just obviously with all the players not having their visas ready, but now they're a full strength side, they can interchangeably swap. All of these new players that have come in for them are like for like swaps for their starting lineup. So I think this is where we start to see the Philadelphia Fusion maybe make a tournament this time. And that would be great for them. Um they obviously need to make a tournament performance if they with the caliber of team. But who knows? We we just don't know yet. Okay. Ah, uh, Valiant. Oh, how, this is, Valiant is just how you ruin an esports team. You know what? They don't even. I'm just gonna. Alright. Like, right. they is Valiant. It's just how you ruin an esports team 101. Like, the, the, moving the team to China. Getting all Chinese, I believe these are for Chinese contenders players, they might not be, but they, they just haven't been clicking. Something's not working with this team. The coaching, it just isn't there, they don't play their players, the coaches don't show up to scrims sometimes. This team is just falling apart, and I don't think they're going to get it together for the season. It's, just, it's constant 3 0s. What can I. There's not really much to say about the Valiant, it's just. Ah, it's frustrating watching the Valiant more than anything. Now, breaking of teams is frustrating to watch. We have two teams here that are actually frustrating to watch. We have the LA Gladiators, and I, they, 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 I'm not going to mess around here. I'm just going to put them there. Um, they are an A tier team, obviously, with the addition of Moth. Um, Moth has been fantastic at times. He has gotten serious pole streaks, but Moth has been great at times for them. Obviously, they've got Space um, and Bird Ring, Capster. A mirror on the Doomfist. This team, when it hits, it hits hard. And th it showed in the June Joust when they went 4 0 in qualifiers, obviously missing out just to the Dallas Fuel that had to occur. But still, they did very well. And I think um, they, they're going to just keep going from strength to strength. And this team has the potential to go really far. And I think they will make an honest push for playoffs. They're in a position to do it now. I believe they're third or fourth in the table. So yeah, if they can just keep posting up results, obviously the result against Paris wasn't favourable for them, but Paris played out of their minds in that game, and we'll get on to Paris in a second, but yeah. I think the Gladiators, if they can keep up this run of form um, that they had in the June Jouts, they will be great, and they are comfortably in a tier team for me. So now, the Chengdu Hunters. Oh, the Chengdu Hunters. We had so much hope for you. I think a lot of us put too much faith in this team. Um, they have a lot of issues with their hit scan on their DPS. Jimmy just doesn't post the numbers that he should. He misses the shots that he should be hitting. But um, they are good at times. They are interchangeably good. I can't put them. Honestly, I can't put them up here. It's these two teams. Even though Philadelphia have the hot and cold streak, and I just I think high high B tier. High B tier, and they need to prove to me that they can be the A tier team that we all know they can be. And once they do that, I can move them up. But for now, they sit here. Um, not much to say. When this team hits, they go. But 
They just haven't been getting the results they should be recently. Now, EU rep, the Paris Eternal. This team is basically a team of rookies who have just found their stride and went 2-0 in the opening qualifiers. Obviously beating the London Spitfire, which I'm a bit upset about, 3-1. And completing the insane reverse sweep against the LA Gladiators, they played out of their minds, and the, the wearable they're shown to just switch their comp on the fly. So that's just something that the Gladiators just didn't know how to counter, that which won them the game. That is that is the sign of a good team, that is the sign of a team that can go far and win a tournament. And my bold prediction for the Paris Eternal is that they are going to get to the finals the grand finals of the summer showdown. I honestly think they're going to do that. I think this team has found their stride now. I think they're going from strength to strength with Dudrio adding on that support and adding Vistola from the British Hurricane. They are just on. They are great at the moment. And on from the rest of the season, I can't put them here. But with the Changing Hunters, I think they have to be think of B tier at the moment. They're not A tier. Um. But they're almost there. The Soul Dynasty had a very strong start to this um to this thing, and I think they fit here. I think honestly, uh, we put them here in between the two. Um, obviously you got Profit and Fitz on that um DPS line, Animo and Creative on the support line are just amazing, and then. Having Marvel and Tuyu as their tanks now, after Jester was posting up some weird, weird comms going for the Roadhog pick, not really being the best player to build, I think that Marvel and Tuyu have come in their, come into their own, and they're really proving their worth on this team. So, Soul Dynasty, quite honestly, yes, a tier team. Um, and there's not much more I can say about them. If they if, if they come out every week as um, playoff Soul Dynasty. Then they will dominate. Um, but obviously, they are a very up and down team who can sleep their walk their way into a two zero or three zero deficit in case of grand finals, and then almost complete a reverse sweep or actually complete a reverse sweep. Um, so yeah, moving over, we have the San Francisco Shock going for the three peat this season. Now, if I was doing this video just to piss off my friend, I put them into the idea, but they're not a B tier team. This team is amazing, and even with the, the loss of Striker, yes, at the moment they look leaderless. But I think that players like Super, players like Smurf, these veteran players on the team need to step up now. They need to be able to step up and say, okay, we had a rough start, we're going to get it together now, We're going to. Ha I'm going to be this leader that the Striker was in this team, and we're going to make it to Hawaii this time. Um... Now I'm going to put the shock up here. I've um I'm gonna put them. I think they're better than the fusion. I think soul actually. I think soul are better than fusion. Uh, I think fusion better than that. So that at the moment, yeah, that's A tier at the moment. But like I said, shock are amazing. They it's it's shown by the fact that they've won two world championships. Now, if they can get the three peat, that would be great. But I just like to see them get to a tournament for once, please. Obviously, they are in the top two for now. Easily could change. Easily. So, moving over to the Hangzhou Spark. Shy could be rookie of the year. Architect has been posting up good numbers on the refill. Um, their support line has been doing well. When this team shows up, and when this team doesn't underestimate the team they're facing, they are a force to be reckoned with. Um, I think this team has found their stride now under this new management, under this new coaching. And quite honestly, I would put the Hangzhou Spark, my honest opinion, they are an A tier team, they are a bottom A tier team, but they are an A tier team. So, that is my opinion. Um, yeah, that's where I'm going to put them. Now, hmm, hmm, hmm. Most people would put them here. Uh, I should put them here. But this summer showdown performance, even though they went 0 and 2, it was a very good effort. Kalex has come into his own playing the Lucio. Um, Reaper on the Baptiste has been going pretty well. He's been staying alive a lot more. That support line is just staying alive a lot more. Um, Mulfic has come into his own on the Diva role and even on the Sigma role. 
Hardy is not as aggro as he used to be. He is being that shield. He is getting them onto that point using the shield, and they are walking as a compact unit. And you can tell that this team has been practicing week in, week out, trying to improve. They want that first win. They are hungry for that first win. And I honestly think they're going to get it. It might not be in the Summer Showdown. I think they will be the Titans in the Countdown Cup, though. Um, and I am going to put them here. Controversial, yes. They don't have a single win on the board. I can't put them here. I would love to put them here, but they don't have a win yet. But they have looked a lot better. So I think they're bottom C tier team at the moment. In my heart, they're an S tier team. But at the moment, bottom C tier team. Now, Toronto Defiance are actually in the top 6 for the total strength rankings. They are, I believe they're 6 and 4 at the moment. And they are doing really well. They're coming to their own, getting a spire on another one month deal. I just think they should sign him at this point. He still has been posting up good numbers. Um, their, their support line has been doing really well. Their tank lines has been doing very well. I just think this team has found their stride. And they are making an honest push to be more than just the gatekeeper to the top of the league. I think that they are honestly going to be here. I'm going to put them, honestly, I think they are high B tier team at the moment. That could change if they um, then go out next week or the week after whenever they play and lose. But at the moment, I think the Toronto Defiant are quite honestly a high B. Now, the Florida Mayhem are on a losing streak of 5 games at the moment, and they should not be. And I think, like, we go on, we talk about the Florida Mayhem in our predictions video later in this week, so I won't break this down too much, but the fact that Checkmate is starting now with a, um, of a BQB is just a huge sign of how this stat team is going. Jockey obviously, is always going to post good numbers on the Tracer or the Echo. LG just hasn't been performing on the main tank role. Gangnam Jin has been... Slime and Gangnam Jin have been almost non-present in most of their fights. So, I can't... Uh, they're on a fight... Uh, I can't honestly put them above these teams who have been getting wins recently. Um, so honestly, at the moment... Yes, they made it in May, but they haven't had a win since the May made it, so I have to honestly put the Florida Mayhem in C tier, mid C tier. Um, they're not D tier. Um, there is a team that will get D tier soon, but yeah, that is why I'm putting the Florida Mayhem, surprise, surprisingly. Now, Boston Uprising have been on the up, pun intended, maybe not, but they had a fantastic win over the Florida Mayhem. And they just had a great start to um, the to the May, May, May Minute, to the summer showdown. I mean, what else, what more can you ask for from this team? They just they're just winning at the moment, and they're doing well. Obviously, they beat the Vancouver Titans three one, and they they went on to beat the Florida Mayhem, and they're two and zero at the moment. They started off um two and zero, and ended up two and two, and then went out right away in the knockouts. But making knockouts is great for this team. And if I'm going to put um, the New York Excelsior for making it to June Joust, I have to put them at least there for making it to the knockouts for the June Joust. Um, this team is on the rise. Um, Stand 1 is doing very well on the main tank position. All of their team has just made significant improvements, and I can't wait to see what more comes from this team. So yeah, I think they're bottom B2 at the moment, but easily if they post up more good results go up in the ranks oh the vancouver titans what it must be to be a vancouver titans fan so i suppose it's like being a london fan but with less hope um the team hasn't won a single game since last season this is just two seasons in a row they're about to go winless if they don't get a win soon obviously they're getting some map wins here and there but their team it's just not performing as well as it should be. They have good... They, obviously, there are a lot of contenders players in this team. But... They came from good contenders teams. They should be posting up better performances. Obviously, Fire coming from the Atlanta Rain last season. And he hasn't been performing as well as he should be on the... On the things like the Lucio. 
I just don't think like Dalton. I think the only good member from this team has been Taru, who has been getting them those checkpoints and maybe getting them those map points. He's been good on the Lucy on the, on the Pianchi. and yeah, the, Taro is honestly carrying this team, and it's just not enough for them. Something needs to change. The Vancouver Titans are definitely the definition of a B tier team. Now. Washington Justice. When they play Decay, they are A tier. When they don't play Decay, they are B tier. They went 4 and 0 in the main melee, they are A tier. They went 2 and 2 in the some in June Jouse, they are B tier. They haven't started yet, so honestly, I think they have the potential. I think they go here. Like I said, they they should be here, but they, some management seems to think that Decay should be playing, even though Decay is what is making the DPS work and making this team work as a unit. So, I think Washington Justice can't see fit into that B2 position at the moment. Now, the Atlanta Reign. Making it to a third in the June Joust is impressive. And they just need to build on that now. And whether they do that not or not, it's down to them. Um, Hawk and Gator are amazing on those on the tank duo. They're a great tank duo. Um, Masa is great. Masa has been doing some great performances on the Baptiste. Pelican is potentially um rookie of the year. Um, and the the whole team is just performing. And I honestly think at the moment the Atlanta Rain are an A tier team. And we're gonna end this off. I think that yeah, they are an A tier team too. Um, Decent Outlaws, Happy, Dante, um, Jangryu, um, Piggy, Crimson, Ju um, Juvi, and Jake. That team is just a well organized unit, and they are proving them that they are a top team this year. And 7 and 2 is proving that. They just need to get through this roadblock that is called the Dallas Seal and maybe make it to a tournament this year but they are definitely setting themselves to be in the qualifiers for the playoffs and just be in the playoffs in general for the grand finals tournament so yeah solid A tier team that is my overall rankings for the Overwatch League teams obviously some of that a lot of this is bias and a lot of this you could change around interchangeably now let me know what your rankings are for all of these teams in the comment section below. If you like this video, please do subscribe and, and like the video if, as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!